Welcome to the swing set. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are, but we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own lives on the swing set. Thanks for swinging by. Hey Cooper, guess what? What's that, Shira? I just found the most amazingly sex-positive, eco-friendly, progressive, female-run sex shop. Oh, really? This place sounds great. Who are these people and how did they get the elusive Shira B. Cat stamp of approval? They have the cutest name. They're called Smitten Kitten. Their brick and mortar store is located in Minneapolis, and their online shop is located at www.smittenkittenonline.com. They specialize in high quality sex toys and equipment for people of all genders and sexual orientations. Handmade, one of a kind items, non toxic medical grade toys, educational books and DVDs, and even ethically produced porn on demand. Oh, Shira. What? Get- with the times everybody knows about smitten kitten online.com in fact life on the swing set has partnered with smitten kitten to give all of our listeners a 10 percent discount when they buy items from their online store all our listeners have to do is enter the code swing set at checkout and boom discount no way i can use it too they have the super hot harness i got my eye on Absolutely. In fact, I invite you and all of our listeners to go to smittenkittenonline.com and use the product code SWINGSET. Not only will you get 10% off your purchase, but you'll also be supporting one of the most progressive and sex-positive businesses in the industry. All right, Cooper, I'm on it. www.smittenkittenonline.com. Discount code SWINGSET. You'll be glad you came. In this beautiful, vast, confusing, and occasionally lonely world, the temptation to align and label yourself is nearly irresistible. Non-monogamous people are no different and have a variety of non-monogamous brands and styles to choose from. They're swinging, polyamory, the ever-so-vague monogamish and open relationships, and of course, there's even cheating. But once you choose sides, it's so much harder to check out the other brands. Today, I invite you to join me, Shira B. Katz, and my husband, Gavin Katz, as we take over the swing set to talk about what it's like for a couple of poly folk to visit the big, scary world of swinging, and then, you know, to talk behind the backs of Cooper, Ginger, and Dylan, because they left me here all alone. Gavin! Hey! I would like to welcome you... Uh, for your first time ever on Life on the Swing Set, it's my first official time on the Swing Set. I've been here, I've made cameos a couple times. Oh, do share. Well, there was the uh, phone call that I made to uh, try and uh, win. I the forgot contest. about that. Yes. Okay. And then there was the Open SF where I was briefly in the intro, leaving because it was a room full of swingers. Oh, okay. it was not. It was a room full of swingers and you. What are you talking about? At Open SF. There was not a room full of swingers. Is that the during our panel? No. The pre panel in the hotel room. The pre panel in the hotel room where where Dylan and Cooper got really, really drunk. Right. I like a couple of swingers do. (laughs) I'm glad that we're already bad mouthing swingers here on Life on the Swing Side. I I like that you're trying to piggyback off of uh, my awesomeness, but no, it's just me so far. Okay. Great, we're off to a great start. So before we jump into the topic today, which I believe is just going to be about you and me uh, exploring the world of swinging, because because there is a lot of poly snark out there about swingers. We we get a lot of uh, tales, and <laughs> there's a lot of speculation. But we wanted to see firsthand what these gatherings were like, what the culture was like, and report back to you guys. Cooper, Ginger, and Dylan, they're all off in Desire right now in the Bahamas or wherever that that 
crazy places. Cancun. Cancun. They're in Cancun mm-hmm. being naked and sexy with lots of other naked, sexy people. In fact, a lot of our listeners are probably there as well right now because uh, the swing set did invite all of our listeners to join them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're all gone. We'll, we might also take the opportunity to uh, talk a little shit while they're gone. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I you've mean, already I, started. That's why I'm here. Right. I'm not here for reporting. But there's like, I have this big long list of uh, neurotic notes from Cooper about don't forget this, don't forget this, and make sure. So uh, let me just address this next one. Um, one of the things Cooper was kind enough to remind me of is the fact that Smitten Kitten Online.com, they are the sponsors of Life on the Swing Set. And he wanted to make sure that I told all the listeners about the awesome deal that they can get when, uh, when they. Go to smittenkittenonline.com and enter swing set as a code. They could get 10% off and that's pretty snazzy and they can buy all sorts of sexy things. I was perusing the site, trying to get familiar with what they have there and uh, I found the ultimate of sexy products. So the fine folk at smittenkittenonline.com, since they are very environmentally friendly, we talk about that in the commercials all the time, but we only bring the sexy. No, Smitten Kitten Online, they are female friendly and environmentally friendly, and they prove it with the party in my pants cloth pads. This is, I I really feel like he's going to really regret this happening. It is a party in my pants. Because at SmittenKittenOnline.com, I got cloth pads. They're gorgeous, dainty little numbers where uh, instead of adhesive, there is little snaps uh, where the wings of your normal plastic environmentally unfriendly pads would have adhesive little snaps they cr- they snap around the outside of your underwear and then uh, you you bleed all over them and it keeps this your pants from getting is messy never gonna air it is the this period is... In, i'm sorry not the period in my pants the party in my pants cloth pads oh oh yours for the low price of fifteen dollars only at smittenkittenonline.com you go there you enter swing set and you can get 10 percent off i also found something what'd you find i, I found a uh, dildo shaped a- after the cleaner uh from the labyrinth that's the, 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 the most big, horrifying the, the big, thing yeah the big I've drill thing heard. yeah and even on the end of it there's a couple of muppets on the end operating it for you <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know why you lie in every commercial. Well, cuz lying is funner. Okay. Then talking about bleeding on cloth. Party in your pants, people. Party in your pants. It is uh yours at smittenkittenonline.com. When it comes to online dating, you at home have a lot of options available to you. But we here at Life on the Swing Set recommend cassidy.com. We've tried many websites in the past, and while most are adequate and some are even pretty good, the one that we keep coming back to is Cassidy.com, and there are a few reasons for that. First of all, and most important to me, is ease of use. You want to put a picture on your page? You know how to do it. It's intuitive. It's built in. It's Facebook for non-monogamy. Cassidy also has one of the most aggressive campaigns out there to get the most people all around the world onto the site. Right now, potential playmates are scattered throughout regional websites. Wouldn't it be awesome if they were all in one place so you could search one site and find absolutely everyone you were interested in playing with? Well, that's where the campaign for Cassidy comes in. Cassidy need not be your only site, but we recommend you give it a try. And if you sign up using the link on our page, you support Life on the Swing Set so we can continue bringing you what's been called the best non-monogamy podcast out there. Cassidy.com All right, back to uh, back to life on the swing side. I keep wanting to say Pedestrian Polyamory, which is my other show. Superior that, show. That I uh, record with Gavin here. Yeah, it's much better. <laughs> it's, like, it's like this, but uh, less um, awkward. No, and I disagree. More awkward. Totally more awkward. <laughs> well, it's uh, yeah. So let's see, fair swing setter. I don't know what we call the swing setters. See, I can't call you pedestrians. The the swing bump setter spikers. No, not that. I I don't understand what you're saying. I was trying to do. I it made sense in my brain, and then when it came out of my mouth, it was no longer made sense. It was a volleyball reference. 
think that's swing setter swing setters swingers sw lifers let's keep doing this for an hour how about lifers let's just do this for an hour and then like all right no, thank you for <laughs> listening <laughs> All right, lifers, let's uh, see if I can get myself fired today. So we wanted to talk to you guys about some our recent explorations in the Bay Area swinging culture, as well as some uh, history about us so you have context. Not all of you know who I am uh, that intimately, and not all of you know who Gavin is. Probably none of you know who Gavin what? is. Hey, just huh? say it. Just saying. So, but I have a superior show. Why would they not know who I am? Ah, uh, man, it's it's a equal. It is a separate but equal show. Fair enough. So, Gavin. <laughs> yes. Tell the lifers about uh, about about yourself. About myself, uh, I am a polyamorous man of closing in on a decade. Not true. Well, ish. I mean. You I'm, round I'm, up I'm, I'm on cl- your experience, and you round down on your age. It's I, very yeah, confusing for people. I'm closer to 10 years than I am to one year. Can we say that? Sure. I'm, 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 I have some experience in, in polyamory. Deal. Deal? Mm-hmm. I'm not a rookie. Not a rookie. Not a sophomore. Mm-mm. Probably a junior. Okay. I'm probably a junior. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And uh, I don't date very often. Okay. And... um. I'm not very good at talking about myself. Okay, that's which is probably why I don't date very well. I'm not very good at selling myself. <laughs> I lifers um, have been poly for about thirteen years now. Thirteen, yeah, thirteen years now. Hmm. I got Gavin. He's a primary partner. Got another primary partner that cohabitates with us, and life is pretty hunky dory around these parts, for the most part. Mm-hmm. When, for the most part, when we're not all crying and screaming. Yeah. Uh, or talking about our feelings. Ah, uh, feelings. <laughs> so, Gavin, let's talk about your introduction to the world of polyamory. Why didn't you consider swinging? Why didn't I consider swinging? Uh, well, uh, this girl that I was dating wasn't a swinger. She was polyamorous, and she was uh, brainwashing me to do polyamory. <laughs> this girl sounds like a real bitch. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> The B is for bitch this week. Oh, wonderful. It's been a while. Yeah. It's a joke running over from the B and sheer B cats. Uh Uh-huh. Stands for bitch is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. It's sheer B cats converted me nearly a decade ago, give or take half a decade. And um, (laughs) I I never went to swinging just because the the perks of polyamory was more than the sex to me. Okay. Explain that to me. Well, the... The benefits of polyamory to me is about the intimate connection that you make with someone, the uh, infatuation that you can get with uh, people, uh, the just desire to get to know everything about somebody, and having someone have that same interest in you. Like those are the things that like I am uh, striving for when okay. I'm dating. Okay. And it's not so much uh, the sexy times, although it's nice when that happens. Okay, that's fair. And so you feel like swinging doesn't have that sort of No, intimacy. no, I don't think it has. It definitely has that, but I definitely think it's it's not as much of the goal or it's, it's not as expected. Right. Okay. I personally, being the type of girl who gets really attached when she has sex, I was never cut out for swinging, though I do appreciate all facets of sex positivity and non-monogamy. I support it all. I just uh, personally am not cut out for it i also am less interested in group sex and public sex and i guess the 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 swapping idea Mm -hmm. is something that never really appealed to me which is a reason why i kind of shied away from swinging for a long time um because i've been poly for so long i have seen many different phases and or i've been through many different phases of thinking about different brands of non-monogamy and generally speaking, uh, I had a pretty negative view on swinging for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that came from defending my point of view uh, for sure, a long yeah. time to people who would say, I would say, oh, I'm polyamorous. And they'd say, huh, you're a swinger? And I'd be like, ah, uh, no, no, I'm not a swinger. <laughs> yeah. That's all about sex. Those people are perverted. Gross. Ew. No, I'm not a swinger. Um, and so I kind of fell into that role for a few years. And 
And I found that it was a really sex negative place to be, mm-hmm. um, to say, oh, it's all about the sex. Um, well, sure. Why not? Sex is, <laughs> yeah. sex is kind of awesome. And it is also kind of what separates uh, friends from relationships when you really get down to what you, I can have a much more intimate friendship with somebody that uh, doesn't involve sex. But as soon as that we involve sex, now we're a relationship. Right. Anyhow, that's that's my history with with uh, feeling weird about swinging in general. I I got over it. Um, and then when Gavin and I were initially dating, I wanted to expose him to the world of sex positivity and sexy events. And so we went to we've been to some sexy parties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or One. Uh, specifically sexy venues. <laughs> yeah, not not very many. Right. But yeah, I have been to some with you. We went to, and this is going to be a very Bay Area focused podcast today. Um, one of the one of the weirdest things I've been poly for all this time. I've been in the Bay Area for all this time, and I've never really been exposed to swinger specific events. Mm-hmm. Um, and and now I finally have been, so I can actually talk to people about the Bay Area swing scene. <laughs> uh, but before we before we get there, uh, so we went to the Power Exchange mm-hmm. once upon a time in a different in. A, Carnation than it exists now. Uh, here in San Francisco, there is a sex club called the Power Exchange, and I haven't seen the new version. Um, the old one got shut down for some reason or another a couple years back, and then the new one popped up, and it's like really close to the Tenderloin, and I uh, don't want to go to the Tenderloin late at night wearing sexy things. So I don't go to the new Power Exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, that information might even be old by now. I mean... It's been a year since I've even looked up the existence of the Power Exchange. But the first one was over on Otis Street. And it was a three-story sexy venue. Yeah, and uh, so the first floor was the dungeon area. And that was open to everybody. Yep. It was open to couples, open to single people. um, And it was just kind of a... uh, It was a much larger area than the other two floors. Yeah, and way back in the day, the the top floor used to be just for gay guys. Uh-huh. And I used to be so curious about what went on up there. Yeah, but uh, they changed that towards the end. They changed it but right before they closed down, and it became a uh, couples and single females area only. Yeah. And that did not compute to me. I just, that did not compute to equal swingers to me because but it should have obviously <laughs> obviously it should have but, but i think this is the closest that we got initially to being in a swingery type scene so we go up to the third floor and the, we had to bypass the second floor it was that was women only correct no no what's the second floor the second floor was just the social area oh with like the stripper poles and there was or stripper pole singular Mm-hmm. And there was, um, you know, a couple different sexy rooms, come check, bathrooms. Those sound sexy. Functional rooms. Uh, so yeah, top floor. Top floor, uh, we go up there and explore it, and it's a lot not that different. It wasn't as exciting as I made it out mm-hmm. to be. A lot more exciting in my head when you're sure be cats and imagining all the boy kissing that must be going on up at mm-hmm. the top floor. But yeah, we got up there and it was fine. It was normal sexy space. Beds, things going on, uh, lots of humans. Actually, one of those rooms was enormous and it was just like queen bed, queen size bed after queen size bed after yeah. queen size bed. It looked, it looked like a furniture store, honestly. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> it looked like people just could try out the mattresses and uh, see how they work. But it was like much more, <laughs> much more control testing. The plastic covered mattresses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it was really interesting to see how people would gather on the beds because it seemed like there was like two or three beds off in the corner where all of the humans were. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it wasn't, not everybody was uh, actively doing things, but whenever somebody would start do, actively doing things, like they would just get a gigantic crowd around them. Yeah. It was, it was much more of a voyeuristic um, atmosphere. It was, very much. And so you and I wanted to have sexy times, but we just wanted sexy times together. Yeah. 
and uh, this is this is what I always tell people about when uh, when I talk about like Swinger Code and how bad I am at it and how I had no idea what was going on. So <laughs> we find a private place, but like every private place in this at the power exchange on the third floor, uh, <laughs> all of the private spaces were accessible to foot traffic. Well, there was some areas that um, you can close off with uh, with the impenetrable barrier of a rope. I see. But those were full, so we um, just kind of went to one of the um, open rooms that doesn't have any... It's just a big, wide open space to walk into. Yeah, so we found a bed, condomed up, uh-huh. and we were on the bed and doing stuff. It was it was okay. It was sexy. It was a little bit nerve-wracking. I think it was, you know, people oh, watching. Oh, yeah, it was, it was very, like... It was like, we're doing this because we need to do this. But it like, I don't think it was like a it was pleasurable hot. experience. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> it was like, all right, let's get this out of the way. Let's do this. <laughs> we're here on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about all the follies of that experience? Go for it. So we were, we were doing it. We were put, I was putting baby in. That is also a joke from another but show they, that they, I don't approve. If they, if they can't get what that means... They understand with the re- it doesn't. It's not a very deep I cut of okay, what fine, it could possibly fine, mean. Go. I was putting baby in Shira, uh. and uh, she she clenches me tight and she's like, "Someone's touching me! Someone's touching me!" Uh, yeah, and this- I'm like, "I'm like, do you want me to stop?" She's like, "No, no, just keep, just just, just ignore it." <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Someone was touching me, and it was really uh, the, it was the swinger code that I didn't understand. And I kind of glance over, and it was a woman who mm. had been kind of trailing her fingers down my arm. Yeah, and kinda, yeah. Now we know she was trying to see if she could join, or right. her, her and her partner could join. We didn't bother to say, "Hey, what's up? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just it, freaked me out. Yeah, and um, at that time we uh, we weren't we weren't very used to using condoms. No. And so ha- half not together, anyways. Yeah, not oh yeah, not together. Um, and like halfway through, you were just like, take you just like did some magic trick where you just like reached down and just pulled the condom right off. Like I've never ha- pulled a condom off that easily before in my life, and you just did some magic trick where it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> And then you're just like, don't come. I don't think we're allowed to come here. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you a were so, long time you, ago. We were so worried about etiquette and everything that like... <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be a proper human. <laughs> she like, just, we very blatantly put the condom on because that's what we were supposed to do. And then she would just covertly ninja removes the condom when, <laughs> so that no one could see. Well, no, you. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was. Uh, anyways, we're very <laughs> responsible humans here. Yeah. Uh, so that was our first trip into kind of swinging land. I mean, that's pretty much par for the course of everything that we do when we venture into something. Explain. Just neurotic and just worrying about etiquette and we're like, oh, I hope we're not fucking up. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> but, you know, since then we came, we have become pretty involved in uh, the poly community. We've uh-huh. learned a lot. We've been to a great many events. We uh, have been potlucked. To death, we have <laughs> partied. We have uh, become pretty enmeshed in the poly community. We know a bunch of people here in San Francisco. Yeah. We we know the culture of the poly culture, but we have really not been exposed to any swinger equivalent. No, not, I mean, there, there's always like uh, bleed over events. I, I'm not talking about the party in your pants, but I'm talking about party in my pants. I'm talking about Smitten Kitten Online.com <laughs> discount code swing set. You're a whore. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, there's a lot of events where it's like, this is a poly event, but it looks like a swinger event. Uh, well, I think that sexy parties don't necessarily. Yeah, well, like, I mean, but I'm saying, like, they're not. When you think of polyamory, you don't think of parties like that. And I don't think that every. I don't think every poly community uh, across the world has access to sexy parties like that no absolutely not no no and it's funny to see poly branded sex parties yeah but we've never been to the swing air branded sex yeah the, parties. The, the, just to be clear the the, the poly branded sex parties um everybody just kind of gets in a room and they just all kind of start saying their feelings to each other all at the same time <laughs> that's not true at all uh they there is a room for that 
however. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not even fucking around. <laughs> So when Cooper asked me to take over the swing set while he was in Desire, I wanted to be able to talk about swinging, but have a little bit more context of the culture here in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to our good friends here at the swing set to the SF Cuties. Mm -hmm. They're slowly become the mo becoming the most podcast famous swingers without having their own podcast they're infamous they're you think the, so? they're um, they're a mythical uh swinger couple yes the male half is a villain the female half is an angel and a sweetheart <laughs> is that the <laughs> that, is that the official is, that is official <laughs> they, they, their first their first introduction to us uh introduced us to uh swingers and their business cards yes that's right tell them about the business cards With, well i mean they didn't give it to me oh that's true they gave it to me <laughs> yeah yeah they're not See, again, Gavin's a single guy. They're giving She-Ra their business oh, cards. Oh, come on. So, yeah, I was... Uh, the night that I met the SF cuties, they introduced me to the phenomena of the Swinger business card. Swinger newbies, take note. Uh, poly people, have your mind blown. Uh, so... So, guys, apparently swingers put all of their, the, they put all of, like, their information and, like, a sexy picture and their names on a business card. Like, it's usually because swingers, most swingers are, like, closeted. They don't want to out themselves. It's usually, like, very, um, like, mysterious and sexy. And then on the back, there will be, like, a blank thing that says, like, room number or contact details or something that they will fill in and give to you. Like, so if you're at a, a sexy event, uh, you'll know what hotel room will be theirs. Yeah. And it's, it just blew my mind. Swingers, they're so organized. But, like, not only that, but, like, swingers are, like, they're, like, the Illuminati of, of sexy times. Like, this is, it's, they're the secret society of, like, codes and, and su secret procedures. What are you talking well, about? Well, they got the business cards and... They don't call it swinging when they're together. They call it the lifestyle. Okay. And they don't call it sex parties. They call it play parties. Mm. It's, a, it's a goddamn secret society. <laughs> the, I think they're behind 9-11. I, I believe that they had something to do with it. I'm glad that we've come to accuse all of the swingers of being terrorists. Yeah. But you, you, there's something to that. Like, whenever, like, even the invitations to swing events are in code. Like, yeah, no one wants yeah. to outright say what's happening. Yeah. You want a room full of people putting babies in each other? It doesn't say that at all. No. Well, I mean, I, I think that would be a better code. <laughs> they, should, they should adopt that. Make it look like it's, like, for, like, a, a baby shower, but it's the shower is of jizz. I don't I this is the worst <laughs> this is the worst let's move forward so SF cuties agreed to take me and Gavin out and introduce us to the community so they they took us to a swinger meet and greet which occurred at a local winery yeah more more secret society stuff what do you mean uh, meet and greet at a winery and the winery it was like it was nighttime at the winery, and it's it, it's it's funny to think that like like it wasn't a sexy party, it wasn't a place where sexy times occurred, but it was where swingers went to meet each other, and then I guess I Hand, play card games with each other's business cards. <laughs> right. I, I was I was playing I was collecting all business cards like a Pokemon. <laughs> So when I arrived, the first thing I noticed was how nice all of the cars were. <laughs> swingers are rich, y'all. At least these swingers that I got introduced to. Well, we are attending a winery out in the middle of the fucking woods. Uh, yes. <laughs> like most wineries are, they need space for their grapes. But, like, this was, this was remote. This is where... This was, like... It, this was... Winery, winery, place where murder happens. Winery. He's, he says that, and it was 10 minutes away from our house. It was. <laughs> it wasn't that far away. No. Uh, so we arrive. I notice how nice all the cars are, and I was very happy that I was wearing heels because uh, it looked like it was going to be fancy. Mm -hmm. um, and the invitation said, like, no no jeans for guys oh, yeah, and yeah. collared shirts only. Yeah, guy, guys had a dress code. Girls did not have a dress code. It was kind of funny, too, because it was, like, because every guy was wearing a button-down collared shirt, it was 
vaguely leisure suit larry-ish <laughs> it was I, like come on guys come on speakers do we have to well, have this so like the guys had to, like you know they had to wear like slacks and like button-up shirts and ties right. and the girls got to dress all sexy I've, I've kind of felt like it was kind of like a modern day version of like uh roman times you think so? Or like, yeah, the men in their togas and the women are just, like, naked or, like, just covered in bronze. Uh, that, perhaps, perhaps. It was, it was, it was cool, though, that everyone looked really nice. Yeah. Everyone was really fit and very... Yeah, that's the other thing I noticed, for sure. It was definitely in an older crowd. Uh, Gavin and I are in our 20s, and I want to say most of the people were probably in their late 30s to maybe late 50s yeah we were definitely some of the probably some of the younger there was younger people than us there right. but not many right and not even many in our age range but very attractive quite fit yeah older but yeah that, that, was, that was the other thing you noticed the cars i noticed the bodies on these dudes <laughs> tell me Swing tell it. me about you checking out the boys <laughs> so paul when when i go to poly events like i'm not a very big guy but like i'm pretty much bigger than most of the guys there uh in terms of like fit guys right i go to i go to a sw one swinger party and like i'm looking at all these bodybuilders around the place i'm like god like uh, it, it was completely different it was completely uh, completely different like and uh, the guys were so tall there were so many tall <laughs> yeah men. yeah i think swingers are like if you're over six two you have to be a swinger you can't be poly <laughs> <laughs> I, you know any poly people over 6'2"? Yes. Well, no, no, besides that one. Uh, no, you no. don't. You don't. You know one. I know one. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if, if Swingers versus Polly has a basketball game, Swingers win. It's Pretty true. much every athletic event, Swingers win, actually. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> So all the women were dressed really nice. They were the the what they were wearing was quite diverse. I saw a lady in like a Tarz like a Tarzan outfit. Yeah, yeah, that and was, was cute. One woman in a see through shirt. Was there? Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh wow! You know, I, I gotta look closer. Yeah, it's not like I'm gonna like be like boobs and <laughs> point them out to you. I mean, in my head, I was doing that, but. <laughs> Uh, there was a bar, of course. It was at a winery. Well, yeah. There was booze. <laughs> there was booze to be had. Um, and it, yeah, and it was it was fortunate that there was booze because I was nervous and and needed something. You were to nervous, occupy. yeah. Yeah, uh, but I gotta say, like within maybe five minutes of arriving, mm -hmm. I was uh, I was pounced upon. Yeah, you're like, hey, you're coming in here, and we're like, okay. Uh -huh. And then you got thrown into like a grape pit. Yeah. So as soon as I get there, they're like, oh, oh, come here, come here, come here. You're perfect. And I'm uh -huh. like, I'm perfect. Yes, I'm coming to whatever this is because I'm perfect. <laughs> uh, and I get into this room and they say, all of the women are smashing grapes. We would love for you to try it. And I'm like, smashing grapes. And sure enough, I walk into the back room and there's a big vat of uh, Pinot Noir grapes. <laughs> and... Um, and there is ladies in the grapes yeah. smashing them. So once again, I'm also feeling very gender biased in this event. Uh, I wanted, to, I wanted, I wanted to wear some jeans and I wanted to w smash some grapes. <laughs> Two things that I was not allowed to do. So I get into the room and this gentleman starts taking off my shoes, which is kind of an intimate thing. Uh -huh. And it just didn't even occur to me like that. This is a thing that I could never see happening. At a poly event. I can't imagine being brought into a room and having someone just take off my shoes. But I was into it. It was awesome. So he took off my high heels. I was wearing high heels, guys. Uh, and, and he lifted me up. He picked me up and placed me in a vat of grapes uh, where I stomped around and a bunch of people just looked at me. It was really awkward and I felt like a girl. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was a girl being looked at smashing grapes and i was there for like 45 seconds before i was like okay 
time to get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with it. There was just nothing to accomplish. I, I smashed and you, I you, tried. You, you, you reached the maximum fun potential to be had I in did. smashing grapes. I did. I reached the maximum fun. I was like, getting... It's pretty much when you got set down in the grapes, you're like, all right, that's what that's like. <laughs> I And so like at that point, I like reached down and ate a grape. Yeah, that was disgusting. It wasn't disgusting. It was disgusting. That was somebody's toenail. But the point of doing that is that it's going to go... It's going to be drunk. The juice is not the actual grape. Yeah, but what's the difference? The the grape has no more juices and just foot. No, it was it was just you a ate, partially ate, smashed, but there was a seed you in ate, it. You ate a, a grape carcass covered <sighs> in foot. Yeah, there was a seed in it. It might have been a toenail. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I got out and I uh, and I I was very charmed already by the fact that I was hoisted into a vat of grapes upon arriving to my first swinger meet and greet. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much protocol. Actually, even if we weren't at a winery, they would have put you into a vat of grapes. You got carried off as well, actually. I did. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we walked back inside. And they're like, oh, we need you. Yeah, actually, this lady uh, comes up to me and she says, can I borrow your husband? And I'm like, please, take him, keep him, you can have him. <laughs> I was hoping, secretly hoping all night that Gavin would get converted. <laughs> I don't know why. You were... I don't know. I just feel like it would be the most charming thing. She just wants me to grow taller and become more fit. And richer. That's, yeah, <laughs> and have a better car. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, someone asked me. They're like, "Hey, you want? Can we take a picture?" I'm like, "Okay." And basically, uh, a girl wanted to have a picture with a bunch of guys holding her. Yeah. And I was selected as one of the lucky guys. No, they said they said they wanted the handsome guys. She wanted a picture with all of the handsome guys. Right. And then as we got went outside, uh, one of the guys that was out there was like, "Wow, we're just this is that look turning looking more like a generational picture because <laughs> there was like a man in his." Late fifties, a man in his forties, a man in his thirties, and then me. Uh huh. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, it was a generational hunks. It was was the uh, term used. Really? Yeah. I like it. Also, I never even met the person I was holding up <laughs> or had a conversation with them. No. Nope. Uh, SF cuties came and I uh, just uh, enlisted me. Overall, I had a lot of really interesting interactions with these people. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the local Bay Area swinging scene. For example, Gavin and I learned about the swing train. Yeah. With the craziest shit I've ever heard. I love it. And so explain what this swing train is, Gavin. So basically, they, um, they rent out two train cars on a train that is bound from San Francisco to Chicago. Reno. No, it goes to Chicago. Oh, does it? It goes to Chicago. Okay. But, um, so <laughs> it's bound from San Francisco to Chicago. Uh, they only go from San Francisco to Reno, and then they stay there a couple of days, and then they come back. But, so they're renting two train cars. One of those train cars is specifically for sexy times. Yeah. It's a putting baby in train car. It is a fucking train. Yeah. It's a f- well, it's, it is a fucking train. It is a fucking train. Yeah, it's a fucking train. <laughs> and so they go, and it's a whole weekend. So basically, the train gets dropped off in Reno. They all go stay at a hotel for a night, and then they fuck at the hotel. And then at the end of the vacation, they get back in the train. Yeah, and, and then they get to join the Mile Long Club. That's right. The Mile Long Club. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> And they fuck all the way back home. But any, as uh, swing set fans know, that every woman who has sex with Gavin Katz is already a member of the Mile Long Club. That's right, because Gavin's penis is that is the enormous. most that is the most cocky I've ever sounded. But like, I couldn't let it go without being said. No, it's fine. That's yeah, fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure all of the pedestrians on pedestrian no, polyam that, right here. Sh- this don't listen to her pedestrians. Lifers, lifers already know about the cack. I like how they're called lifers as if they're like in prison. I'm calling them lifers. I don't know what else to call them. I'm going to call them lifers. That's what you are, Life on the Swing Set fans, at least for this episode. In fact, Life on the Swing Set fans, uh, you should write me an email and suggest names for yourselves. You can write to me at shara at lifeontheswingset.com. And pedestrian polyamory fans, since this is going to run on my, on uh, my, on our, our, our feed oh my God. as well. This if is... you have snarky suggestions for this... what to call 
all the life on the swing set bands, you can write in at shira at pedestrianpolyamory.com. Keep that up. This is going to turn into death on the swing set. Well, are you going to kill me? Yeah. I'm sorry. Don't kill me. I yeah. love you. You're my best friend. <laughs> well, second best friend. Well, who's my first best? <laughs> the, 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 your other prim- primary partner. I the think transient. I, the trans. The transient. Trans. Knee. The transy. Transy. The transy. <laughs> You're so bad. What? You're a bad person. What? Okay, so we, we met the people who uh, coordinate the swing train, which blew my mind. Yeah. I met... I feel like swing train deserves a jingle. Swing train. <laughs> yeah, I agree. There should be sound effects. <laughs> In fact, uh, listeners, you guys should explore the swing train thing. Um, they told me I should not necessarily say the name of what it is. But, but it's you Googleable, so try hard. You'll figure it out. So, yeah, we're not going to tell you what the name of it is, but we will tell you that it is a train full of swingers. Search. <laughs> There's not many of them. Yeah. Uh, I also met someone who was introduced to me as a blowjob Olympian, and then I was very confused for you a while. You were so gullible in this. I didn't understand. You were so gullible. So, S- the male half of SFQ, the villain, the villain of SFQDs, uh, introduced. He's like, "Oh, this is uh, so and so, and she is a regional uh, champion of blowjobs." It- he could not have sounded more like he was making it up as he was finishing his sentence. I was on board though and shira was all about like oh yeah that you're that's what you are really <laughs> Did, I- <laughs> and you has follow-up questions and the, the more confused she was about you actually asking questions about this the like the more questions you would ask i was so confused because i have heard of swinging events where there are like blow job competitions and so i thought that she won a blow job competition and so i was like so is it quantity or quality what uh <laughs> what what kind of contest was this and i'm pretty sure i offended her but she was how lovely be, also how would it be quantity like would it just be like like you just line a bunch of dudes up and like you just have to like go keep going like one in a row. Like is it Maybe. to completion? Maybe it's like to, a relay. Is race. it to completion or is it just like you just like <laughs> just put your mouth on each one individually and just keep going around in circles? I want to do this game. Let's do this. Let's <laughs> let's do this, deathers. <laughs> lifers. Deathers. Lifers. Gavin wants you all to line up so he can suck your dick. Please. What? Immediately That's do not this. What I said. He said he wants to do this. It's gonna this happen. Is, I'm this, coordinating this, this event. This is this is swingers. This is. We're supposed to be more homophobic than this. Swingers are not homophobic. If that's one thing we've learned uh, <laughs> after hanging out with a bunch of swingers and knowing life on the swing set and everything else, I, every swinger I've ever met has been such a fucking swing sweetheart. Truly. Mm-hmm. Weren't the people at this meet and greet very nice? They were so nice. So, I'm going to go ahead and get in trouble and say so much nicer than poly people. You think so? Yeah. But yeah, like, and, and the other, you know, when I say there were, a lot of times when I go to poly places, um, as you can tell, as I've accused swingers of being a part of 9-11, I kind of have a crude sense of humor sometimes. Absolutely. And that almost never goes well at poly functions. True. Um, I mean, it, it does, like, like, with, sometimes I don't normally establish that, like, hey, this is my sense of humor. I normally just go straight into it. Right. And then, like just swallow in the awkward that follows my joke being a atomic bomb of, of horrible. Yes. And uh, it's, 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 that didn't, like, I, I felt like um, there was a lot more uh, cheerfulness and uh, just uh, a more laid back sense of humor. Yeah, everyone was very friendly. Yeah. It, it was. Because well, they wanted to fuck you. Sure. <laughs> but that's that's fine. If, if how about this? How about everyone treat everyone else in the world like someone they'd like to fuck? Just be really nice to them all the time. That, I feel like that's a quote that it's going to like go like quotes from Gandhi. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Shira B. Katz. 
<laughs> Treat well, everyone like you want to fuck them. <laughs> Well, I usually tell people, treat everyone like they're someone's baby, because everyone is someone's baby, and it yeah. gives you a lot of empathy for them. However, but treat everyone like you want to fuck them. They'll make them feel special, and uh, you'll be really friendly. Wait, I don't want to fuck a baby. But I think you're mixing things up. <laughs> I don't want to... F- Hair cures AIDS. That was funny. There's someone at home laughing their ass off at that. Fucking baby. Not oh, you. Oh, because of not the you. Yeah, not you. I'm sorry. Don't fuck the baby. Yeah. There. There you go. Yeah. I'm on board. You haven't seen it. I have. I, I just like Kevin Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, those were the people we met. Like, culturally, I have, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I really appreciate swinging culture. I do. They're so nice to each other, and there's a nice community. I did get some background. Like, one of the people was telling me, like, oh, yeah, there's all sorts of drama. Like, everyone always has drama in these events. If you, like, look at it, look closely, like, you can see through the drama, which is pretty prevalent um, in poly events as well. But yeah. I think this is prevalent in life. Oh, yeah, totally. There's always snark go to and drama. Go to, like, okay, go to the monogamous uh, group scene, with, uh, oh, a- a- a.k.a. bars. Right. <laughs> there's drama. Oh, yeah. A plenty. It, people have drama right um but i found the swingers are nice and that there is in fact a lot of parties that happen here a lot of swinging parties that happen here they're not publicized the way that a lot of the poly stuff is secret society because it's a secret society but you it's penetrable and it seems like the way to i think do it's it, the point is that it penetrable <laughs> It seems like the way to do it is through these um, Cassidy, Cassidy, which is a sponsor of Swing Set mm-hmm. as well, um, and Lifestyle Lounge, and, and a couple Fet of Life. different, and Fet, not less so on Fet Life. Well, they were but talking like, about Fet Life there, as though. soon as we walked into this meet and greet, they're like, here, and they gave us a badge. We had a, a badge with our name on it, and the information that they asked for was our name, our email address and our uh cassidy profile name so people could look us up later and i'm like i don't have one of those um (laughs) but yeah it's i i apparently you can penetrate the san francisco bay area secret swinger scene through cassidy (laughs) Uh, a a lot of the events are publicized there yeah and oh yeah and while we were there there was like all these postcards like little flyers for the other events there was that a were swag happening. table there was a swag table there was chocolate i didn't get chocolate i had a kiss a hershey's kiss ah it made me happy <laughs> uh so yes that was our recent venture we did not have sexy times nor were we a part uh, like we did not we did not get invited to well we were partially invited but you know like even though we didn't get uh involved in a swinging sex party uh-huh. I, I feel like that you know we got um the culture of the swingers more so than if we just went to a straight play party i think you're probably right because i mean that. we've we've had we've been to play place play spaces before right and you know and the way i party at play spaces is i just kind of sit in the corner of a room I think I learned a lot more by doing this. And I think you're probably right. It's harder to have a conversation with someone when their penis is pointing at you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was our experience out in town. We we learned some stuff. We're happy. Uh, this is probably not entirely interesting to a lot of you lifers. Um, but maybe this next part will be. Um, because now it's time to talk about Cooper and Dylan and Ginger behind their backs. Okay. You ready? Right, let's do this. So first, let's uh, first let's talk about the show. Gavin, what do you think about life on the swing set? Not a fan. Don't listen. Why not? No, that's not true. I do listen. Um, I don't know what to say. Oh come on! What do you think about the show? What do I think about the show? Yeah. I think I think you guys talk about me way too much. Well, you are like the focus of my sex life. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'm your married partner you have a whole sexy double life talk about that talk about talk about those dicks what i'm talking about my dick uh, stop talking about your penis on the show yeah okay that's what you think that's what i think about the show that's my overall opinion i only listen i only listen to things waiting for me to be talked about so i don't really listen to the content (laughs) of the show one thing i would like to see more from you guys is to hear you guys all together what do you mean, like in the same room? Yeah. We did that. I know. Well, I, that's why the word more was used. I see. 
I would like I would like I want to get you guys all together again and I want to hear you guys interacting face to face. Yeah. So not and not not you guys all together and Dylan drunk in the bathroom. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, uh, Life on the Swing Set is recorded um, in three different three different cities. Uh, we got East Coast covered by Ginger. We have West Coast with me, and then the uh, the two boys. They're over there in the Midwest. Uh, so we're often not in the same room, except the one time where we were, and then everyone was quite drunk and giggling on a bed, and Gavin ran away. Yeah. I want to go uh, try and uh, be social. How have I changed since I started podcasting with the swing set? Since you started with the swing set, um, I think two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, um, I think your opinions on um, different cultures has um, really been awakened. Um, you know, you had very little knowledge or interest in the swinging culture before right. you joined the show. And, and even for that matter, the poly culture, you had very little interest in the poly culture. No, it was very much like a, a me on my own type of yeah. poly girl. Yeah. And, um, I think, you know, when you first joined the swing set, I think you were kind of, you kind of were envious of the swing culture. Absolutely. And so you kind of reached out to your your version of a swing culture to and the community yeah the community um oh crap we're sweaker society too yeah see oh no we did 9-11 <laughs> i'm gonna cut that so we don't get raided <laughs> so yeah you, you you had that interest and um it, it, i think you it, it's made you branch out a lot more than you did before Okay, cool. One of the things Gavin used to always say is that uh, <laughs> Gavin didn't listen to the show for years. Like that's not. You've only been a, on for two. How for I, like a year and a half, you no, didn't listen no, at all. No, I started listening after you came back from Burning Man, so I didn't listen for the first year. Okay, and it was because that's only because it was so goddamn boring. <laughs> Be nice. No. So because he didn't listen at all. I I would always talk about how Gavin doesn't listen to Swing Set and just kind of talk about whatever the fuck I wanted. You learned a lot about me through listening to the show, didn't you? I, oh, yeah, absolutely. I There was a lot of times where I would just be like, I had no idea this was true. <laughs> like, I didn't... Right. There, there were certain things that you would say that um, interests that you had. And I'm like, no, I, I didn't. Uh, we've never done anything like that. Mm-hmm. Well, why not? We should do right. that. So it's like, I, I, it's kind of like a, I get to read my wife's uh, journal. It's true. And there's a lot of things that, I don't know, just being able to listen in on conversations that your partner has with other people because, you know, they will, different aspects of their personality will be brought out with yeah, different people. Yeah, and I get to hear you in a different dynamic. Yeah. So what do you think will happen to the swing set over the next two years? Over the next two years? Yeah. Well, I think, um, so I think Dylan is going to get a giant ego and um, have his own spinoff show. And Do you think so? Oh, yeah. I think he's going to get, he's going to demand his own show. He's going to demand his own show. He's been running for swinger president. It would be so great if he had the show swinger president. Yeah. That should be a podcast. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So he's going to get his own spinoff and he, it's going to be a very bitter blowout. Why? I'm just I'm just throwing predictions out there. There's, I can't oh, you do think why. he's gonna yeah. leave? Yeah, okay, he's gonna okay. he's gonna leave the swing okay, set. Okay. Ginger is going to reveal to you all that she's never actually swung in her life, and that, that. this was all. You have to let me continue. <laughs> okay. Um, and Cooper is going to finally reveal to the world that he is actually Penn Jillette. <laughs> I I like your predictions for the swing set. Yeah. So I am totally on board with your prediction about Dylan. <laughs> I am going you to stand to, by. You want him to leave the swing set? No, not that leave. You, I had a spinoff and I stayed. No, but that wasn't my prediction. You said you stand by my prediction. My prediction is that he's going to get a big ego and quit the swing set see. and start Maybe his own I'm show. Wrong. So you want Dylan to leave? No, don't I don't add, want. Don't add, no, add, no, I love no, Dylan. No, you want him to leave? I love Dylan with all of my heart. I bet he would disagree with that statement. <sighs> he probably would. He likes disagreeing with me. <laughs> but I do love Dylan. And uh, he... And, and he would say that that's, that wouldn't be a good show. He 
he's been such a wonderful catalyst in my life. I feel really grateful for him. And he introduced Burning Man to me. And he is a really sweet kid. And I would be fascinated to hear a Dylan only show, um, a Dylan and Tonya show or anything, because I feel like, um, I feel like him being the guy who learns something all the time. He would have a very earnest and and lovely look at swinging. So Mm -hmm. I'd be totally into that. And let's see if I have things and predictions to say about Ginger. I feel like Ginger over the next two years is going to make major strides in coming out. She's been making all of these baby steps and I'm really um, excited and proud of her. Coming out is not a swinger. Coming out as a swinger. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so we're not on the same page with that one. <laughs> we're not on the same page. Um, and I, I feel like uh, she's been getting so brave recently, and she's been so inspirational and helpful for, for so many people. Um, I can see amazing and beautiful things happening for Miss Ginger. And Cooper. Cooper is spectacular. And I see him, he builds, uh, he builds communities, he builds projects, and he brings people together to work on them. And I find that really amazing. And if I had a guess as to where Cooper would be going in the next two years, I think he's going to start event planning. I don't think he thinks that he's going to start event planning, but I could see something happening for him around actual physical place event building. You know, I I think that right now, as he's off in desire, he's probably going to, he's probably going to really relish uh, that experience as much as he did Open SF and his previous trips. But it's you know it's something that he put together, and I can see him getting really inspired and wanting to do something uh, more event things, more real world physical space things for people to get together around, and I could see him being a community builder in that way as well. Yeah, I I definitely agree that uh, Cooper is um, probably um, he's in the he's he's gonna get into the business of opening swinging to more mainstream outlets. Yeah, his his vision of progressive swinging is really 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 wonderful, and he deserves a lot of uh, a lot of attention for it, and it'll happen. He has an awesome message, and people are going to find it. Yeah. So cool. he just has to stop doing his uh, magic show in Vegas. Long <laughs> right, precisely. Uh, cool. I think that's it for this show today, Gavin. That it? Yeah. I'm. Uh, I I am done on the swing set. I'm done talking about the swingers. So you're you're quitting the swing no, set. No, I'm not quitting the wow, swing set. Wow, this is your last episode on no, the swing set. No, 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 I'm not quitting the swing set. Oh, I'll be back next. They're gonna miss you. Ne- they're gonna miss you. I'll be back next. But week. you, they can. But if they um, they want to see us, you know, life on the swing set is the um opening act for pedestrian polyamory. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh, they're leading into our show. Oh, you're so competitive. They're 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 our lead in. Like they, they're they're trying to uh, piggyback off of our ratings. It's so the other way around. It is. <laughs> uh, so guys, let me see if I can pull off what Cooper does around here. So I would like to invite you all to visit I us. I don't hear the music. Uh, it's it's gonna be, it's coming. Is it's. Sh- you hear it? No. There it is. Okay. So, so, guys, I invite you to Im- follow us all on Twitter. I believe that Cooper can be found at at Swing Set Life. We have Dylan. He is at Dylan underscore Swing Set. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Ginger, you can find her on Twitter at, at Ginger in the Prof. I am at Shira B. Katz. And why are we doing all these plugs for people that aren't even here? It's just what, what happens. Do well, you think someone would be listening to this being the first episode they listened to? And they're like, yeah, I really want to follow Dylan on Twitter. <laughs> He's swinging he wasn't president. Even, he, he wasn't even here. You could also follow Gavin, the angriest of the swing setters. I'm not a swing setter. Don't let me in with those. At that, Gavin those, Katz. Those people. At Gavin Katz. <laughs> <laughs> For some cheerful tweets. Always. Always the most delightful of the swing setters. 
I'm not. You a are God. under I, the swing set. No, I am not. Label. I, you are. No. I'd Pedestrian polyamory is a life on the swing set podcast. Oh, no, no. Uh, there's also Facebook. You can find us all on Facebook. You can like the life on the swing set page there. You can go to iTunes and write us a review here at Life on the Swig Set. We love it when you do that shit because it it helps us improve our ratings and helps uh, new people find us. So uh, write us a little review and we'll love you a long time. Love you long time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> there's no blooper on this show, unfortunately. There is. There is. <laughs> there's no blooper on swings. Oh, there is. There isn't is. There? Yeah. I haven't heard. I haven't. You, mind? you haven't listened. I haven't listened in ages. Oh, I, I haven't listened even... since like the seven episode seventies or something. Wow. I'm on the show. Right. So you don't know how terrible it is. <laughs> Stop. Also, uh, you can find more of me at Pedestrian Polyamory. We are on iTunes. You should listen to our show. It's all about polyamory. Um, and and, but and I, Gavin's I, dick. I, no, it's... God damn it. No. You brought it up this time. You can't act all indignant. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's okay if I call myself fat, but it's not okay if you call me fat. It's your penis that's fat. It's a big, uh, fat penis. <laughs> Fine. So you can find Pedestrian Polyamory on iTunes. You can, I don't know if I'm missing some stuff. I know there's places where you can call, things you can do. Listen to one of the other episodes, guys. Go, I'm to, bad at this. go to Smack Cat. Oh, yeah. Go to smittenkittenonline.com and buy yourself a party in your pants. Or, yeah. or the cleaner. Or the cleaner. Uh, thank you, Gavin, for joining me here on the swing set. Well, it was uh, the pleasure was all yours <laughs> it was and thank you lifers for swinging by hi there swing set fans in the podcasting world ranking high on itunes can make the difference between some listeners and lots of listeners do us a favor subscribe to our podcast on itunes rate us and leave us a one to two sentence review if you use an android phone visit life on the swing forward slash app and you can download our new app and listen to our whole library on demand thanks for listening You're listening to a Swing Set Podcast. Hear more at lifeontheswingset.com. What's that? Oh, man. Cooper's going to fire us after he sees what we've done to a swing set. Um, (laughs)